In 1897, a book was published that started a new genre of supernatural storytelling, one that has influenced generations of novelists, playwrights and scriptwriters alike. That work was Dracula by Bram Stoker, whose fictional main character is believed to have been based upon the Transylvanian-born Vlad III of Wallachia. During his reign in the 15th century, he executed as many as a hundred thousand people by impaling them on wooden stakes. Amongst his victims, so it is said, were a great number of Ottoman Turks. Vlad III is celebrated in Romanian folklore for his efforts in driving away the invading Turks from their land. Stoker's novel is perhaps best known, however, for Count Dracula himself, the vampire at the heart of the story. However, Stoker did not invent the idea of the vampire. In fact, belief in these beings is much older, dating back to the Romans and the ancient Greeks. Our story takes us to the deep south of the United States of America, to the mysterious marshlands of Louisiana and its principal city, New Orleans. Known the world over for being a melting pot of cultures and the home of jazz, the opulence of the Crescent City hides a much darker face. It is home to manifold stories of the supernatural, from black magic to vampires and spine-tingling ghostly encounters. We begin our tale of New Orleans' bloodthirsty predators in the courts of 18th century France, with a character by the name of Comte de Saint-Germain. He was an enigmatic and strangely alluring man. He was a master of music, a true polyglot and a fantastic conversationalist. A man of great wealth, his background was shrouded in mystery. Perhaps most unusual of all were stories that he never appeared to age. French writer Voltaire called him the man who knows everything and never dies. In all his time in French high society, not once did anyone see him eat, only sip wine. After his death in 1784, which no one witnessed directly, he vanished from court life. It is said that after his passing, he was seen alive by a number of witnesses, but of course, nothing can ever be proven. Fast forward to the roaring 1920s, New Orleans is dancing to the hypnotic rhythm of the jazz explosion, and a man by the name of Jacques Saint-Germain enters the picture. Sound familiar? Virtually everything about this man's character matched the description of the French luminary previously described. A rich, exuberant socialite who strangely never ate a single morsel, but sipped steadily on glasses of wine. One night, a lady stayed late after one of his lavish parties and found herself alone with him on his balcony. Suddenly, he grabbed her and went to bite her neck. In fright, the lady pushed back to defend herself and toppled from the balcony to her death. Later, when the authorities went to Germaine's apartment to investigate, unable to find the man himself, who had evidently disappeared without trace, they found tablecloths splattered with blood. The immaculate kitchen seemed never to have been used and was bereft of food. Only bottles of wine were to be found there. One investigator poured a glass of the liquor and tasted it. He spat it out at once in horror. He swore that it had been mixed with human blood. A decade later, and another gruesome tale unfolds. In the depression hit New Orleans in the 1930s, two brothers, John and Wayne Carter, worked in manual labor by the riverside. They lived in an apartment in the French Quarter. One day, a girl fled their apartment in extreme anxiety. She ran to the city authorities. Her wrists had been cut to induce slow bleeding, but not immediate death. When police raided the third-story apartment, they were shocked to find four other people tied to chairs, all with their wrists slit, and 14 others dead. Some of the four surviving abductees had been there for many days. They told the police that the brothers would return home from work every day and drink the blood from their bleeding arms. The police waited for the carters to return that evening. When they did, it took seven or eight men to restrain them. They were unusually strong for men of average build who had been laboring all day. Eventually, they were executed for their crimes and laid to rest in a tomb. Some years later, when another member of the Carter family was to be buried with them, the grave workers were stunned to find the vault empty. No trace of the Carter's remains. To this day, people still report sightings of two men who resemble the two brothers very closely. 
Years after their execution, the owner of their former apartment witnessed the same two figures on his balcony, whispering quietly to each other. When they realised they had been seen, they jumped three stories down from the balcony and ran off. It is said that if a vampire drinks of your blood for seven nights in succession, then you are destined to become one of his kind. If this is so, then it might explain the eventual fate of one man whom the brothers abducted and fed from for over a week. The unfortunate went on to become a notorious serial killer who reputedly drank the blood of all 32 of his victims. Is it mere coincidence that New Orleans has the highest rate of unexplained disappearances in the United States? Is a bloodthirsty ancient army of attackers stalking the atmospheric streets of the Queen City of the South? Some would say that such stories belong in the realm of fiction and that things like that just don't happen in the real world. Others would tell you to keep your window closed at night and have a string of garlic handy. You never know, you might need it.